it's spooky time! Yay! <laughs> you get a level! Daddy needs a sofa. <laughs> no, Daddy doesn't need anything. Uh... <laughs> to the end of <laughs> <laughs> Come on, sad chat. Don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. <laughs> she doesn't know I'm about to read it live on stream. There oh, we go. No. She, she sent the pamphlet back. To go, and we were on like one of the last days we were there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my car's in a video game. <laughs> Mom, you really don't have to lie. Okay, I know it's Mom. you. Thanks, buddy. You're uh, literally our only viewer, so <laughs> thanks for joining. Oh, oh, that's disturbing. I think. <laughs> oh, oh, I just got it. Yeah, oh. hey, we I did it, everybody. I, I crashed it with Kyle's. Oh, we are. Something is blowing up. This no. is great. <laughs> well, at least our baby boy is in there. Yes! Dude! Yes! Karen came in clutch! Oh my gosh. Coming in. Get her. She's Come down. on! She's down. She, oh, there's, someone, there's someone else. There's someone else. Yes! Oh man! I probably woke the baby up. Oh, I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> I mean, I can hear you. Check your uh, check an OBS if it changed your input again. I think there was a Windows update. If I'm not mistaken, there was one. I know. I think it's just. I think it's just. It's just Yeti for OBS. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. My uh, Microsoft updated, so now I got to start this over. But the blessing is, I hadn't started recording, so. We get to redo Woo! this. Okay, everyone be quiet. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Local Chat. That's the name of the podcast that I couldn't remember. Episode 19. Can you believe it? It is May 13th, 2021, and we are here. Joining me today, as always, is a man who believes that lights are always on. Ian Gibson. You don't turn them off, you just turn them all the way down. <laughs> and also joining us is a man who really doesn't like my introductions. It's Zach from Save Data. Ah, oh, that's great. I love that. <laughs> was... Ian, Ian, Ian made it great, but it was good. <laughs> I came, I, no joke, I came up with some good ones in the shower this morning and I completely forgot them. So... <laughs> Let's uh, let's be excited about that, folks. We got a lot to talk about tonight, and before we get to that, we got to talk about what we've been playing, and what we've been playing is a lot of different video games. And I'm going to start with Ian Gibson tonight, and that's because he's just Thank a special, you. special boy, and he's talking about games I don't care about. So I figured, get it out of the way. <laughs> all right. So first of all, let's talk about the the Outer Wilds. I've got the right name this week. Um, guys, I haven't played this game at all the last week. I, Ugh. I'm curious what, what you guys, I, I played like 80% of this game, what I think is about 80%. I feel like I'm close to figuring the game out, but the last time I played, I played for about two hours and I was kind of hitting my head against, I was doing a bunch of loops where I felt like I wasn't making progress and I don't want to look things up. And that kind of conflict has made me just not pick it up in the last week. Did you guys hit any sort of hurdle or wall while you guys were playing through the game? Uh, I would say for me, the, the, the hurdle I had was the first two hours because uh, I played mm -hmm. that in the first sitting and then I, I dropped it for like a month and a half. And then I was like, oh, I should go back to that. 
and then I, I restarted it, played it from the beginning, and I just fell in love with it and, and played it all the way through for oh, like a week or however long it took me. Uh, gotcha. I think you're a complete fool for, for stopping at this point, but... <laughs> That's a fair point. I, I feel like I'm right there. Uh, Will, have you ever... Uh, oh, don't, I don't even. Know, I don't have... There's an orgasm joke in there somewhere. Go ahead. Just finish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Um, my history with Outer Wilds is I started it, and that tutorial planet, I was I, I was confused. Like, I, I thought the flying that little practice ship was the game, and I was, uh, like, flying that around. Oh, I was like, is. this is stupid. Like, I don't want to land on these stupid pads, and I stopped playing it, and then that's when I supposedly told you I hated that game. And then yeah, uh, I heard Danny O'Dwyer talking about it on the, it must have been the Bombcast, like, explaining all the stuff, and I'm like, oh, I'm an idiot. And so I just went back, and I still hate the hold the jump thing. I think that is, you, like, hold the jump, or don't you double jump you, or something? You, you no, you mean release the, the, the jump. The jump hack. Don't you release to jump? You release the button to jump. There's it's there's some weird jump game. jump. So mechanic. it's it's um you can jump, but the jump sucks. But you can rocket boost, which gives yeah. you like a kick. But but you have to hold it down to do it. Or yeah. or there is an option. I don't know if it was there when you played to just have it do that by default. So as soon as you press the trigger, the first thing it does uh, is give you that kick. There's something before you so even get the spacesuit. Like the the jump was like on the release of the A button, not pressing it. It was like some the, weird thing. Jump, that I remember the jump sucks, but thankfully yeah. you never have to touch it because of the get jetpack. But I, I uh, once I got cooking in that game, I, I didn't stop. I just pounded through okay. it. So I think yeah, I think what I'm gonna I'm, do. I'm, I'm just so curious because you're at you're at like the 80 percent spot, which is like it, for yeah. me, I'm like, that is like oh baby, everything's coming together. It's beautiful. I'm so ready to go. Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you what I'm stuck on right now. Mm. Or the thing that I feel like I should be, not that I have to be doing next, but what I want to do next, but I can't really do. Okay. And um, slight spoilers here. Mm -hmm. It's on it's on one of the twins. It's on the okay. twin that gets covered by sand. Yeah. So basically, uh, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I forget which one it is. I think it's Ash the Ember Twin. Ember Twin. Ember twin. Yep. So anyways, I'm rushing towards it. So I, I start the loop. I have to rush towards it to get to something at the very bottom of the planet before it gets the high, covered with The sand. high energy lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And I, and I start walking through a tunnel for it. And then there's a part where I'm following it. And then I get to a part where there's spikes and a pit. And I feel like I don't have enough time to figure out what I'm supposed to do before the sand covers stuff up. And then it's like, well, I guess I'm just going to kill myself and start this loop over. So whereas like, I feel like most loops, it's like, if you get blocked off from something, there's other stuff to do. Because I'm so far in this game, it's like I just have like a three minute window at the beginning of every loop. To, to figure this out, which really comes down to like a 20 second thing. So I feel like I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna look up that piece in a walkthrough or something to figure out what I'm supposed to do to do it more quickly. So I don't, cause it's, it's like I need to experiment, but it's costing me so much time and it's just so frustrating to experiment because of where that is. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's do, you, a, that's, do you have that's meditate a, that's yet? A... No. Okay. <clears throat> that's like a thing they don't tell you about, but one of the guys, if you just go talk to him again, he teaches you how to do it. And that just lets you reset the, the loop immediately whatever you want yeah oh that's probably it, that's probably the last guy that i haven't talked to then <clears throat> you have to like talk to them twice it's not it's it's like the one part of the game that is not intuitive at all mm -hmm. wait 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 a minute wait a minute so i i go i find him i talk to him they say hi hi mm -hmm. hi then i walk away then i talk to him again and they have like a list of like seven things that you can do do i have to talk to him again after that i think so, that's so, probably part of it to be exact remember. it's the guy it's the guy in giant's deep but the only person on, on Giant Steak, who's Cambro, in the hammock, right? Who playing the flute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. He, spoiler alert, is also stuck in a time loop. Yes. If you see him on multiple time loops, uh, I think it's the second or possibly even third time. He'll be like, oh, like you, like, you can ask him, like, how do you deal with, like, the fucking stress of, of dying? Repeatedly? Yeah. Like, I don't care. I'm just super chill. You want me to teach you to be how, how to be super chill? And then he teaches you how to meditate, and so you can just reset a loop. Got it. See, yeah. see, I haven't gone back to him enough times mm -hmm. for him to do that. Okay, well, you know what? This is enough. This is something that you would think of, because it's like, oh, I got yeah. all the information for you, so. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a little frustrating, because I feel like up to this point, the game has been so well designed to start to hit my head against these things, where it's like, you taught me, and you're telling me I found everything. You have a cool hint board and everything, but I actually have to go back multiple times. So I'm glad this is just enough for me to kick back in, and I'll go ahead and finish it maybe i don't know we'll see i think you're gonna like it Th that being said i will say if you haven't been to the high energy lab yet i feel like there's a lot you don't know so you might yeah. not be well, I, I don't know because i feel like i've done 
almost all the planets completely except for the high energy lab and then the um the vine planet i haven't really touched that much but all the other stuff i've i've uncovered so i feel like i okay. kind of know what's going on i just need the last pieces in order to do yeah. what i think i need to do okay i, I will um, say the music in that game is real good oh yeah it's got the like banjo pluck in and there oh it's so good love it um so the other game I've been playing, I just started playing today, is called Teardown. It's a nice little voxel destruction indie game. Have you guys heard of this game or seen it? Yeah. I don't think so. I've seen a bit of it. I, I saw you asking if anyone had played it in the Discord. And then nobody responded. <laughs> Assholes. Well, no one likes um, it. So Teardown, uh, the, the reason why I know of it originally is because somehow I kind of follow a lot of indie game devs on Twitter. And they, they do really cool things where there'll be some game dev somewhere who is working on some weird project and they'll post like gifs of it. And then the other indie game devs will pick it up and retweet it and be like, this looks really cool. So all of a sudden, like somebody who's working on a little project, but has come up with a cool mechanic suddenly gets a lot of visibility. Um, and so I've been following the development of this game for about a year. It's basically a first person, heavily artistic, literally voxel based. Everything is made of little like three inch by three inch cubes destruction simulator um you you run a teardown business and basically people call you and they're like hey i need to take care of this cottage it's in the way and you just take care of it and then they're like hey the local folk museum is in the way of my high-rise development can you head here in the middle of the night and take care of it and then they're like <laughs> hey um the guy destroyed our folk museum so we want to steal his expensive cars now and they're on these boats can you take care of these <laughs> can you get them off the boats <laughs> so this is really weird like the aesthetic and the story in it is so good because, like, the, for example, the Folk Museum is the first mission. And the high-rise development is just like, yeah, this is cottage is in the way. Can you take care of it? And you go and you, you take care of it. And the sign says, like, Folk Museum. And you're like, okay, this is a little weird. And then you get home after the mission and the TV's on. And it's just like, Folk Museum destroyed and vandalized overnight. And you're just like, <laughs> oh, no. That's so really like, good. Yeah, like, everything around the game is really good. Um... So there's like little missions like that. They only have like five or six maps, but they're pretty they're pretty big and unique. And they do nice things where like like I played a mission, I played like four missions in one location today, and it felt like I was really getting to know the location and at the same time each mission was unique. Um the only caveat is, and I, I've heard a lot of people other people complain about this as well, is that they start doing this thing where, for example, I had to do a mission today where I had to steal three items across the map but each item was tied to an alarm box. So as soon as you picked up one item, it would set a 60 second timer and you had to get all three objects and then leave the level, which sounds like a cool little gimmick, but they keep doing it for every single mission. Uh -oh. So it's like, it, mm. it's, it's less like you're still trying to figure out, okay, this boat, there's a boat in the harbor and it has a box in it, a crate, and inside the crate is a vehicle and I need to get that vehicle out. How do I do that? But now they've added this whole thing where it's like, you got to set it up and do it in 60 seconds and all this stuff. And it's, I'm just not crazy about that mechanic, but it, it hasn't put me off from the game yet. It's just, it's a lot of fun. Nice little indie game. I think it's on sale for 15, 16 bucks on Steam right now. It's, it just, it looks and it plays beautifully. How, I highly uh, recommend how does it. I will run? say I watched a trailer while you were describing it and it looks actually amazing. I'm, I'm pretty hyped for yeah. it. And they do have a sandbox mode and they have challenges, like individual challenges outside the campaign. And I believe they added workshop support a couple weeks ago. So there's already all sorts of people adding levels and tools and, and challenges and stuff. Um, Will, ask me how it runs. Um, sure. So that was the other thing I had heard about this game was that it doesn't run well. That it like kills your PC because it's literally just a giant physics simulator. Like, um, for example, I was, driving a, I was driving a boat, a big tugboat, and I accidentally clipped a pier. And it just tore a giant gash in the boat, and then it took on water and started listing. And you oh, can that's if cool. you have the right if that you have the right really tools, cool. you could destroy anything in the game. Like I was driving a sprinter van, I kept hitting stuff, and I got out and I turned around, and the entire front of it was gone. It was just the two front <gasps> oh, seats. Oh, I like that. And it and it starts to affect it, you know, like it starts driving weird. Um, but I was worried because I heard performance was terrible. But what happened was the game went on sale two days ago. And I was like, should I buy it? Let me ask the Discord. Assholes never responded, so I didn't buy it. <laughs> and then I woke up this morning, and literally the first tweet I saw, it said it was a tweet from the developer saying, hey, I just put out a big patch, and it adds all this stuff, and performance is now like 50% better. And I was like, OK, well, now I have to get the game. So it runs. Oh, yeah. I've, I have a 1080, an i7, 
and 48 gigs of RAM, which admit is a pretty beefy system, but I haven't had any issues. It runs like a solid 60 FPS. It's not as chunky as it sounds like it was when it originally came. Yeah, so I definitely want to try good. that now. That It reminds me a lot of, uh, there's that Noida game, which is yeah. every pixel is simulated that I really like. And then that in turn reminds me of, do you ever play the Hell of Falling Sand web browser? Yes. With like the C4 yeah. and everything? Man, that I used to play that a lot as a kid. Um, that's awesome. I, uh, I, I remember... I think it was giant bomb checking it out and it was like chunky chunky um so it's good to hear that they did a performance patch because i might pick that up now yep. and or family play family sharing um great that's everything you've been playing yeah well i will just say that <clears throat> tomorrow i have to start playing the stupid space game let's see if it's any good i don't know it'll be for me next week what <laughs> there's three stupid space games coming out tomorrow and i'm gonna play them because i'm what? an idiot who likes to do oh. things like that oh oh sorry that took me a minute i thought you were referencing kerbal and i was like yeah me too man I'm confused. Oh, Kerbal's uh, fantastic. He's, no he's referencing mass effect oh. look i'm gonna say this this is the last shot I will be giving the Mass Effect franchise. This is literally the fifth time I will be trying yeah. to play okay, a Mass okay, Effect game. Nobody cares. Just do it oh. and not complain about it. Jeez, Tune like, in next week. Let's see what happens. In the bedroom all over again. Okay, I'm going to talk about what I've been what? playing before uh, we get to what Zach and I have both been playing. Um, <laughs> Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, the, I believe, 2002 PlayStation 2 GameCube. I'm not sure if it came out on Xbox game was re-released um it is just straight up up resed like nothing else is changed oh the the very bosomy lady who gives you your quest at the who is is uh what's her face she's fem shep the voice of fem shep um oh. jennifer, jennifer hale? hale yeah jennifer hale yeah. she's the like waitress at the or she's the owner of the tavern and her like you probably couldn't see this in 420i or 480i when it was on the GameCube, but her skin of her boobs just burst through on the polygon edges through her shirt like the entire oh, time. No. <laughs> it's so funny. So it's it's great because it's just a Diablo like um, for D and D. So Karen and I have been playing it local co op. It's a great game. It's so stupid. Uh, but it's built for co-op like it, it lets you both open your inventories at the same time you can talk to characters it's very D, &D and long-winded at some points um but it's generous enough with like resing your, your if someone dies resing them so we've just been like hanging around and playing that it's really good um i streamed the original game last year during the pandemic um, and I was really excited when they said that they were remastering this. They're going to remaster the second one as well. And then the new Dark Alliance game comes out on June 11th that I am. Oh. It's coming to Game Pass day one they announced today. So I am looking forward to that as well. Um, very fun game. It was 30 bucks, which I don't I wouldn't spend 30 bucks on it. Yeah, um, I, was, I was about to say 30 bucks for an up res. It's like yeah. that's basically X, that's basically um, Xbox's backwards compatibility program is up res yeah. for free. But it is know. it is a um, I don't know. how It just plays. It's like a really good B game. Like if you just want a game to just chug through, it's real good. Um, I have also been playing Kerbal Space Program. Uh, these are my the beginning of my extensive notes. Uh, I like taking notes. I'm old enough to take notes during video games now because I get confused. Um, uh, I also, it's I, I find that writing things down implants it in my brain better. So it's not like this is important stuff I need to know. It's just like by writing it down, I'll remember it better. Um, Wait a minute, what are you what are you writing down though? They have tutorial a whole tutorial system in that game. So I'm just writing down like the oh. tool tips and stuff. So like I, I wrote down like like the pitch and yaw is A D Q E, and then like space bars launch activate, and I wrote down like vertical speed indicator is this like. Just by writing it down, it's kind of sinks in a little bit better. Also, I'm an idiot. Like we got a fucking nerd on our hands, folks. <laughs> oh, you want to see? You want to see? I have this Burn is my them. outward notes. Uh, oh, wow. We've got Disco Elysium notes. Hey, oh. I'm gonna write down There's the key bindings to this cataclysm. game because it makes me play better. Here's Rogue. Roast him. You want to play <laughs> some Rogue guys? Hey, shut up. Is it? 
Is that the smoke alarm going off? Because you got burned. Oh, I, listen, I have a bad memory, so let's make fun of get me for having a bad memory. Get him to the hospital for these first degree burns he's got, folks. <sighs> I hate Maybe all daddy of you. shouldn't have dropped you on your head. Jesus <laughs> Last week. <laughs> okay, so I'm muting the Discord feed uh, so no one else can hear them but me. Uh, so, other than Kerbal <laughs> Space Program, I have been playing RimWorld. Uh, which is also very good. That is currently my throw on uh, YouTube and play our podcast, three hour podcast, and play RimWorld. Uh, it's just fun. There was a attack on my colony that led to two of my colonists getting angry at each other, and they fought. And one colonist punched the toe off of another colonist. <laughs> which was pretty great and then oh, as soon as that happened incredible. they were like healing up so i'm playing on a harder difficulty now and uh as soon as that happened then there was a raid the raid attacked i managed to fend all those guys off and then after the raid attacked a, a group of uh like traders showed up and usually i like to time doing certain excavations when traders show up because it forces the traders to fight the enemies and then I don't have to lose anyone. So I went and opened up one of the ancient lairs and it had all these people in cryo sleep. They all woke up. They were friendly. I was like, oh, sweet. All these people in cryo sleep. One of them went crazy, started shooting all the other ones, ran out of the place, started killing all of the traders. I sent my guys in to help them. Then they started shooting at me. Traders scatter eventually killed the lady who has now or no i downed the lady who i've now captured onto my side and then i had like 15 people in hospital beds like trying to manage their health and not have them die and it was just like because if the traitors end up dying in your care once you're caring for them it can negatively affect the faction reputation but they live oh, long wow. enough to leave your map they will give you a huge boost um so i'm like trying to save them all this sort of stuff so anyways I finally managed to do all that. Everyone's kind of better, but I, I had been playing on an easier difficulty for a long time, and I kind of like this one step up because it's like it throws a ton of stuff at you and then gives you a little respite and then throws one more thing at you, and then you have like a mm. long period of just like being able to rebuild. So it's very entertaining, uh, and I've also been experimenting with a lot of mods uh, trying to... Uh, there's a lot of like community mods that just add things around the edges of that game so like quicker ui stuff look at stats faster so that's definitely helping out with that um finally dragon quest 8 um i'm a big dragon quest guy they announced the 35 anniversary stream which is going to be in english which hopefully means that like judgment and everything it's going to be global release for whatever they're doing next um that's so amazing. i'm kind of excited about that Thanks. I played half of a JRPG, and now I'm the world's biggest Dragon Quest fan. <laughs> Damn, fucking kill wow. this Wow, you're so mean. Um, uh, I've, never seen, I've never seen this side of, of Ian before. I know, I'm, he's I'm so terrified. rude. It's too much effort, you know? What, what does Ian um, say about me? Behind my back? Oh, you don't even want to know. I'll say to your face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, you I was excited to talk about you... this, but now I'm less excited. What do you want? What do you think is gonna What do you think is gonna come out of it? Because I I do want to hop into the Dragon Quest series at some point. So yeah, hype me up a little do. bit. Yeah. Completely. No offense. Completely uninformed opinion. What are you hoping for? What do you think is gonna come out of this? I have this no 20th, idea. Thirty fifth anniversary. Thirty fifth. Uh, I'm not enough into Dragon Quest Modern to know what would be happening. A lot of people were saying they're hoping for a Dragon Quest twelve announcement. Um, I, yeah, could I could see, see another that. builders. Um. Right now, mm -hmm. it's more of like I'm on the outside of the the like what, series because I haven't played much of it, but I'm like I want to get into yeah. it more. So I'm just excited that they're in this day and age they're including all regions more. Like Japan's been doing that a lot more recently, um, so yeah. it'll be exciting to see what they do. I, honestly, I've no I've no huge takes on what they could possibly think, announce other than Dragon Quest Twelve. Yeah. I think Twelve makes sense because. 11 has been out there for a while yeah and i so this i was gonna start 11 because i i finished another game i was like oh let me play dragon quest 11 and i'm like no i started eight i'm gonna finish eight on the 3ds and i've been stuck at this grinding point so i literally 
put on some TV, sat on my couch, and went to this one spot where you can grind out metal slimes. And I did that for like an hour, probably more like 45 minutes. And uh, then I went and fought the boss and beat the boss and did some story beats. And I'm 100% back into the game. Uh, it was great. Um, it, it was a cool trade-off too because the metal slimes are kind of hard to... They're, they have high defense, but like three HP, but they're almost impossible to hit. So you're like, if you can manage to hit, kill a bunch of them, you're not spending too much time just grinding out normal enemies. You're getting like 10 times or 100 times the XP from each of them that you would get from a normal enemy. So it kind of like accelerates the process, which is great. Anyways, finally, we're here. We're here, folks. Resident Evil Village came yeah. out. Yeah, well, Zach, why don't you start with this? You talk about it. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I would say I'm a late comer fan to the Resident Evil franchise. I didn't really get into it until seven, uh, and then once seven came out, I went back and played a couple. Obviously, played uh, two remake when it came out. I skipped three remake because the reviews were kind of mixed, and generally they all said, "Hey, I don't know if this game is worth sixty bucks right now." So I was like, "Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to buy that right at this moment." I do want to go back and play it sometime, but. Uh, Resident Evil 7, amazing, fantastic, uh, easily one of my favorite uh, horror games. I'm also not a super huge horror genre fan. Uh, I play about one a year and I get pretty into it. Um, but, you know, it's like it's like I've, I, I like Resident Evil. I like Dead Space a lot. Um, I'm trying to think that I'm sure there's another franchise that I really enjoy. But Resident Evil Village, it definitely has what a lot of people were saying coming into it. Uh, where they're like a lot of people saying it, it's it's not on the whole, it's a lot less scary than seven. Uh, it's a lot more action oriented. It's like they added a little bit of the elements of the, the vibes of Resident Evil four, which generally mm -hmm. is the, the series departure from more survival horror, a little bit into action. And then, of course, five and six just went off the rails and were mostly hated by everybody because um, they're not they're, they're so far gone from what the, the franchise's roots are. This one. Hey y'all, there's no zombies in this game. Uh, but guess what? It's pretty okay. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I like the vibe so far. I know there's a big uh, kind of biome change towards the end. I haven't got there yet. I'm only uh, three of the like four generals or captains, whatever they're called. Uh, just beat Moreau, which is the ugly deformed one. Uh, but so far I'm really into it. It's, it's, it has gr incredibly good pacing. I think uh, it does a lot of really smart stuff to 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 give you the scares when it's going to happen, but also make you think. The puzzles are fantastic. Uh, none of them have felt like well, that was a fucking stupid puzzle to me so far. <laughs> uh, everything has felt pretty like when you solve it, 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 it it's not going to make you think too hard, but mm. but it's enough that when you solve it, you're like. Oh, okay. I'm a, you know, I'm a smart boy. That's good. Yeah. That's good yeah. balance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, the, the second biome in particular, uh, which everyone says is the scariest. They're not wrong. Nightmare. Cool boy. Sure. Freaking hated that section. But I, I will say, I don't know if I said this to you, but the fact that they, they hamper you in that section made it less scary for me because I knew, I knew there were sort of less consequences because I didn't have all my gear with me. You know what I mean? Like, I knew um, they weren't expecting totally, me to totally. have a huge fight or anything because they took, like, I didn't have any weapons. And I knew that yeah, one yeah. of those rooms was safe because it had a typewriter in it. Um, so it was, like, it was still terrifying because of the aesthetic. But Was it safe? Because I'm pretty sure that monster could kill you anywhere in there. Yeah, but that's, like, the last 15, that's, like, the last five minutes of that entire section. Is fair, that monster. fair. Uh... Oh, 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 I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah. yes, no, there, there, yes, there, there was no monsters. I, I agree with you. Like, I, I was like, okay, I'm not going to have a fight. There's, there's coming off of the, the first section, which yes, is very combat oriented, uh, especially getting to the second section is combat oriented. Yeah. And then, and very quickly, uh, best, best character of all time, Ethan Winters, uh, <laughs> loses all his weapons. He's like, what? How did I lose my gun? I don't <gasps> understand. I'm weird. <laughs> Where's Mia? I have, I have the personality of a doorknob. Uh, she what? just, uh, you're right. At, at that point I was like, 
there's either not going to be combat or if there is the whole thing is that I'm just going to have to run from it. Uh, and, but the puzzles in that section I thought were super fun and it's still did enough to spook me with the, like the, the little like quote unquote jumpy jump scary moments. And then it does the great thing where you watch a creepy tape and then like 10 minutes later you have to do exactly what happens in that creepy tape. And yep. I was like, fuck. <laughs> It's it, and then you yeah that section is great yeah that that section oh. is the section that was the scariest that I felt the least scared in like the aesthetic was definitely the scariest of anything in that entire game but I wasn't I just I don't I, I don't know if safe's the right word but like gameplay wise I felt safe you weren't worried for your like yeah I was only worried about uh, being scared by things and the other thing that mm -hmm. game does really well is a lot of the scares are you do to yourself by accident there's a really good mm. one that tell that you literally pick up a piece of paper that tells you to do something and i went and did it and it scared the crap out of me and i went i i'm to blame i'm a hundred percent to blame for that <laughs> like it told I, me I that was gonna happen because i i saw somebody post like a twitter compilation of that that jump scare yeah and so i knew that exact moment and so I was like, well, fuck, that jump scare is going to happen. I'm going to try and not do what it wants me to do and still get the answer to the puzzle. And I did. And then that jump scare just never happened. And I was like, oh, oh okay. It, it happens from game. a surprising distance. But I, I, yeah. I screamed so loudly. Karen came in and she's, she like hit the, she ran in and hit the share button on my controller. So it would record it because she wanted to come back and watch what I did. And I like oh, screamed so and shot the shotgun. Oh. But um, I know you so you just finished Moreau um so that yeah you don't have a little bit left i have i've beaten the game i have started i've gone through a little bit of the mercenaries mode uh which is like the arcade mode which is a lot more fun than i thought it would be um hmm. and i've also restarted the game on the village of shadows difficulty that you unlock after beating the game the first time because i think this might be the best resident evil game I think you're crazy on that. Uh, probably excluding one, one's real good. Two remake is also real good. But two remake I, is so good. Two remake is really good. But as I, I mean, this is the I, I think this game is better than seven. I like seven a lot. Seven's too terrifying for me to enjoy completely. This game mm. I was able to get through, and I enjoy the action bits. I thought the puzzles were better. The enemy variety is much better. Uh, Duke is the best. Um, who's the salesman? I, 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 yeah, I agree with you. I think it. I think it fixes a lot of problems with seven. I think it also loses some of the things I love about loved about seven. I, I, I'm not, I'm not mad at it though for for the things it does lose. I, d I definitely. I know people have complained about the second half of this game, mm -hmm. uh, which is a complaint of mine about the second half of seven. Yeah, but like getting through the family in seven is like, I was so fucking in. And I played that game, the first half of that game in VR and oh, like, no. Oh my God. I was terrified. Yeah. Uh, it was so, I, I really like, I really like seven a lot. Yeah. I, I like seven. I, I just, I think this game hit differently for me as someone who doesn't like to be scared that much. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I, it was like, I would, I would not, probably ever play seven again and i didn't touch the dlc in seven but this game i'm playing again and i'm excited for them to put out dlc um i feel you on that yeah. one I, I i can get behind and that i felt i felt like i learned this game really well like there were points where i was just running around and i'm like killing guys at the end i'm up i'm putting certain upgrades into things i went and did all the extra stuff like there's extra rooms and stuff. There's a boat you can go take to different areas and like separate boss fights that I was like so gun ho about doing stuff for. So yeah, I don't know. I, I think this game just hit, hit really well for me. It was super enjoyable. Um, that is, that is one thing I, I love about resident evil games is they're honestly not that long, but they are packed with content. And if yeah. you go back and play them, it's super rewarding. Like you can learn so many different little tricks like fun things to do. Like I have a friend who who got super into speed running RE2 remake and just like hearing him talk about it, I was like, fuck, I kind of want to play RE2 remake again. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 and I, your opinion is the exact same as mine for RE3 remake is I didn't want to pay the full price for it, but I do still want to play it. So uh, fun I, fact, 
all of the Resident Evil games are on sale on Steam right now, Ooh, including like Resident Evil Village, which is now fifty dollars on Steam. And I was like, motherfucker, I just bought it like a few days ago. <laughs> Surprise, <laughs> baby. Um, there's also a good section uh, at the end of that game that I call the Call of Duty section that is uh, really good. I I wonder if people complained about it because it's not very Resident Evil, but it's just like a little respite, and it's just like it's real good. I mean, good, I, I love it stuff. when like a horror game gives like a moment where you're like super overpowered and just like gunning shit down. Yeah, like, it, it, it has like it's the revenge, revenge I, for you. Yeah, I think the reason I like these games so much, especially not that I like Ethan Winters, but I like the concept of Ethan Winters because I was so sick of people being like, "Where's Chris Redfield? Where's Wesker? Where's Umbrella Corporation?" It's like, and and this was such a the even seven was just like you know what screw you guys right now we're gonna pick this stupid man who drives to louisiana to save his stupid wife and we're just Here's have him in it. i think i think ethan winters worked for seven i think he doesn't work in eight however i would say that ethan winters is like tried to be with what metal gear did with raiden where it was like oh it's more of an insert for the player but then later yeah. he becomes a very important character in the lore and has his own backstory and all this stuff. And I think Capcom tried to nail that here, and I think they did not do a good job with it. Yeah. I think Ethan Winter is so milk toast and is supposed <laughs> to be a for you, but is he can't be because he yeah. is a character. I, but all of his things is like, oh shit, just lost my hand for the first <laughs> time. I, I want to know your opinion once you finish the game. So I, I do want to talk to you when you finish the okay. game. Um, because I, I, it doesn't like, it's not like you're going to be like, Oh, I love Ethan winners now, but it's just mm -hmm. like, they did a couple, a couple things throughout that game that definitely made me like Ethan winters more than I did in, in seven for sure. Um, cause I think in seven, he was that, uh, you were just the player, but in eight, mm -hmm. they, they made him, him, him a character, which could have been a mistake, but they at least made like fleshed it out a little bit more. Um, I'm curious to see how it ends yeah yeah definitely we should do like a spoiler cast or something because i would definitely want to talk there's some there's some good stuff at the end um Bradley. yes so with that uh, did you play anything else this week or was it mostly village no, ended up no. shut up ian don't there's laugh village. at me i'm not laughing at you i'm laughing at zach just has his guitar at the ready now oh <laughs> damn it you can see it <laughs> i can see it <laughs> stream camp but it's there oh yeah. Well, then that means, folks, that we are done with <laughs> we are done with what you've been playing. So it's time for the news, which means we get a nice live news theme this week, folks. It's time yeah, for the news. here we go. It's 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 that seminal classic. What's up, news? Here we go. <laughs> Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? <laughs> yeah. I I I actually had. Had prepped like a whole like third verse, like second and third verse of that song, and then I just I I totally botched it. And didn't the classic, didn't, yeah, <laughs> classic. Um, that's man, that was good. I uh, that was a good news theme. I'm glad I wrote it for you. Um, folks, yep. we're gonna talk about the news today. Um, <laughs> if you have anything you want to talk about on the news, you can send that into uh, email at email dot com. Uh, Ian, you want to kick off off the news this week? Yeah, I actually have a news story that as I was reading it, I thought this would make a nice little game. Great, Zach, what do you want to talk about? So uh, we're going like... to play. Uh, <laughs> this is basically, uh, if, in case you heard, Supercell, who has done <gasps> Clash Royale, all those Clash mobile games, uh, was ordered to pay a fine to Japanese firm Gree, who is basically uh, accused of being a patent troll, they had uh, five patents in particular. I'm sorry, six patents that they were ruled as Supercell infringing on. Um, wow. They have to pay, I believe the payment is $8.5 million. They have to pay Gree because of these patents that Gree holds. All of these are related to video games. Um, let me just pull up here. I figure I happen to have a copy of five of the patents. I'm not going to read the entire patent. These are just one or two sentence descriptions of the, each patent. And I thought it'd be fun if I read the patent description and you guys think of some games that would also be infringing on these patents. Ooh. You ready? Uh, yeah. Number one, 
A method to improve the usability of city building games using templates to define the positions of one or more in-game contents that can be applied to in-game areas based on the commands of the player. I might have played a game that's done that. Wait, yeah. is that saying like there's a ghost version of it when you go to place it? So that's every yep. RTS ever. Mm. Yep. Yeah, there's all the scrap mechanic I can think of. It's not even an RTS, but it does that. What? Although this is improved the usability of city building games. Yeah, it's just, it's ridiculous. That's uh, crazy, right? And they won, which means they now have legal precedent to go and sue all these other companies. Oh, Could they go shit. sue StarCraft? Won. Like, what is this? They totally can. Um, I've got another one. You ready? Yeah. A server and method for transferring an object between two users, as well as the communication module for sending and receiving requests for transfers from other players. What? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, they won this? Yes, they won this on these specific patents. This is from the verdict form, which means this is given to the jury to say, this is what you're judging on. Did they infringe on these patents? Here's the thing. I, I... I, I did a video essay on gaming patents talking about just how ridiculous some patents are. This shouldn't be able to be enforced because games have, if something has yep. already done that two years before the patent is filed, then it doesn't count. It feels like they skipped a step here. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure when they actually filed for these mm. patents, but they are currently holding them. That's so wild. Yeah, so that second one is basically an auction house. So yeah. any method... Actually, not even not even auction house because it doesn't say anything about currency. It's just transferring objects between players. That's oh, great. as well as the communication method. It. All right, number three, a control method for a touch screen shooting game, which first displays an effective shooting range, which then detects whether an attack target is in range, and commences the attack base on a command from the player. <laughs> so, any game that's touch based that also has like a shooting range, like a tower defense game where it shows you the shooting range. What? Uh, yeah. That Roblox yeah. game we played? You could probably even argue something that's yeah. not explicitly touch-based like Factorio where the artillery has a range and you can manually fire the artillery. Wow. Crazy stuff. All right, number four, a recording medium and server method for selecting game content to be used in an in-game battle the selected item being replaced by another option for a future turn. That one's kind of weird. Yeah, the replacing part. A recording medium and server method for selecting game content to be used in an in-game battle, the selected item being replaced by another option for a future turn. So oh. I, I'm trying to think, Supercell was guilty of this, and I think it's because you can... Like if you're playing cards, I think it's you trying to describe stuff. Yeah, that you're playing cards, like you're picking one card over another or that you could switch out attacks. Like in an RPG, I could see that as well, where you have a, an attack queue and you're, you're picking where the attack lands. That one's That's kind of weird. Crazy. Uh, this last and one this, is somewhat... This sorry, was in the United States court, all this stuff? Yes, this was in Eastern District Court of Texas Federal Jury. Yeehaw. Uh, wow. Yep. <laughs> Yeehaw indeed. Um, this last one, this is more explicit, a server and control method for selecting character cards from a selection and using them in battle against an enemy character, the selected item being replaced by another option for a future turn. So I think, I think the selected item being replaced by another option for a future turn means you're drawing more cards. Like you play the card and then it gets replaced next turn with a gotcha. different card. So that's like card-based mechanics. So they could definitely come after Hearthstone for that, 100%. That's. But does it have to be mobile based, all this? No. Like that patent description I read is just the description of one single patent. That's so crazy. So if they find any game that uses that mechanic, they can sue them. And when the instructions are given to the jury, they are asked, does this game use that mechanic as described in the sentence? And if yes, then they're guilty. That's insane. That's, this, is a, this is a horrible precedent for video games. It's awful. Um, That's weird. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, I, I didn't like realize this. this would be so depressing. Yeah. So, folks, thank you for watching. <laughs> um, yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of crazy. I messed up. Almost, that's wild. Yeah. Okay. Zach's thinking up of his follow up video now. No. <laughs> uh, I got I got reamed by an actual like patent clerk 
for like misinformation I put in the video, which I disagree with them on. But <laughs> oh well. Did you say did you get weaned? Reamed. Reamed. Oh, <laughs> he said both of them are sexual, but he said cream. Different. You got cream. No, Patton, clerk. No, yeah. I got peened. <laughs> he peened me. He peened me. Oh. Don't pee me, bro. Um, speaking of peen, Zach, do you want to talk? What do you want to talk about? Talk about something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, uh, I actually want to talk about E3. <gasps> E3, the electronic oh. entertainment experience. Is, didn't they change Expo. it? They changed it. I think they changed it. I'll look it up real quick. No way. Yeah. I think they did. Really not the Electronic Entertainment Expo anymore? They changed Expo. They changed it Ex- recently. So yeah. it's still E3, but... It's a different E. That, that makes me angry. I'm pretty sure it's experience, right? I'm looking it up. Can you, you can look it up. Me, can you look it up for me? I'm looking it up. Can you check Google? Hey, Ju- hey Google? <laughs> hey, Google. Uh, okay. This... <laughs> to summarize this article... <laughs> Uh, and and give you my opinions on it. Basically, E3 has now, uh, obviously, it's going to be online this year. It's not really an in-person thing. Uh, hey, guess what, everybody? Pandemic's still happening. Whoops. What? Uh, that was very nice. Um, but basically, this, the, the, I'm actually excited for E3, and I thought that I never would be again after last year, where they kind of were caught unawares. They tried to do an in-person thing until it was very evidently clear that, oh, shit, no, we can't. And in their absence, Jeff Keighley swung in like the vulture that he is and said, I'm going to do Summer Games Fest. It's going to be the new the new hotness. And then completely and, ruined it. And it didn't do great. Uh, I would argue that that wasn't his fault. I think it was very much like, a oh, um, because this was a new thing for him and, and a new thing for all the, the, the studios and publishers that had to create you know, video packages for this instead of doing an in-person event. Everybody got caught, caught unawares and they had certain rules of how they would and wouldn't show their content with other people stuff. And mm-hmm. it just ended up being, instead of E3 being a three-day event or like a weekend event that we that I personally like it to be because it's like, hey, here's three days of just news, 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 excitement, excitement, hype, building, all of these game announcements. It's amazing. Uh, it was just petered out over the course of like two months and none of the announcements ended up being that exciting also because the pandemic kind of fucked up people's development schedules yeah e3 coming back this year i was like i don't know are they going to make this this big of a splash or is this just going to kind of be their like last hurrah before they die very quickly they surprised me with how many studios publishers were like no we're we're going to be at e3 and like people that i'm like what the fuck like capcom konami Oh, actually, Konami just pulled out again because yeah. they don't have. But like so many different people are like, we're in there. We're going to be there. Uh, get excited. And and honestly, I'm pretty fucking hyped for this. Uh, the one thing I'm curious about is what the actual like presentation style is going to be, um, because they, they, they do have like three hosts, uh, Golden Boy, Greg Miller, who I'm personally a fan of, and uh, Jackie Jing, uh, who I don't know her work very well but uh everybody i've heard talking about is excited for her as well and like these people are great hosts they're very good at like hyping up crowds and stuff like that uh and and speaking as internet personalities so i'm excited to see them kind of lead the audience through to the different events and be like oh hey that was xx thing from xx game developer publisher uh get excited we're about to go to an interview with them follow it up with uh the next big announcement from xbox and and if they could do it like that and actually make it well paced, mm-hmm. I'm so excited for this. And then also get out of here, Jeff Keeley, because that's <laughs> what you wish that you had did. Go give some awards um, away. Exactly. Yeah. I will say game awards, apart from the fact that it's way too fucking long, a uh, pretty good event usually. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I have a personal beef with Jeff Keeley. So I, I don't. So does Chris. It's true. So, you know. Stole his wife. Um, I, I, I think a lot of these companies realized they needed, like, people were more into their thing when there was one big event. Mm-hmm. Like, they got more eyeballs and yeah, than they totally. did with the drip feed stuff. So I think people, especially smaller people, are like, oh, if we throw our trailer during E3, we're going to get X number of eyes on it than we would have if we just released it on a Monday or Tuesday during the Square Enix thing. So... I think that, and also it's like the mystique 
and uh experience of e3 like it's a bigger name that shoots out tendrils to people who aren't who maybe only play a madden every year or something like Mm -hmm. they'll be like oh e3's trending right now let me click that on twitter or e3's on cnn or something like that like that pops up more than nintendo showcase or something like that Mm -hmm. yeah so just um quick fact check so it is normally electronic entertainment expo this year, they have unofficially rebranded it Electronic Entertainment Experience because it's online only. So uh, I think it's just a it's just this a, year. It's like IHOP doing yeah. IHOP for International House Oof, of Burgers. Idiots. What a but fucking I, place that was. I agree with you guys 100%. I, E3 has done some weird things. I've never been a huge fan. You know, they don't do a convention quite as well as something like PAX does. But mm-hmm. not having them last year was catastrophic yeah. for the industry and for the fan base. <laughs> I I still can't believe that stupid, slow drip, tit for tat, eventually leaking news that Microsoft and Sony had during a console oh launch year. God. It was insane. That and it was, was a it was, nightmare. It was because there was no E3, period. Yeah. It was because mm-hmm. there was no E3, and it wasn't forcing them to come to a stage, come to a front, and face each other. And so they just played chicken for the entire year. It was so stupid. It sucked. It and that so yeah bad. that was that ended with Microsoft getting leaked right that wasn't even like a yes. decision point Microsoft got leaked then they came out and basically had to confirm it and then Sony mm-hmm. came the week after with their presser I believe yeah so stupid I think that's right. and I yeah. Sony I still took it was like, it was so like September I think it was September yeah it was like yeah. like two months out or less from their actual yeah. release dates which was wild yeah, release dates and price mm-hmm. two months out uh yeah that's crazy um speaking of sony uh there was an interview with why well, don't where is it oh there Bottom we go host? no i was looking at the one where they said did i not put this on there they had said they expected the shortage to last until 2022 oh for yeah the PS5. through 2022 yeah oh through 2022 yeah jeez man i just want a ford f-150 but can't get a ps5 <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. Um, that's kind of crazy. But the other Sony news uh, that is important is uh, PlayStation is working on 25 PS5 games. Half are supposedly new franchises. It's unclear if they're all first-party games. Um, so that's kind of crazy. That's That's a lot more than I thought would be being worked on. But I wonder how much of that is a product of the pandemic and stuff getting pushed. And like, I wonder if any of these would have been revealed by now, if it was kind of the normal cycle and everything. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, kind of crazy. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to say on this? Cause they right, have I'm just, I'm, supposedly I'm just this so... year is still, I mean, Ratchet and Clank is still this year. Uh, that's June. And then, the only other one that's on the list is Forbidden West is supposedly coming out this year. As far as uh, God of War is also supposed to be this year, but get fucked. That's, that's like absolutely not, not happening. I've at least mm-hmm. seen <laughs> Forbidden West game. Is there gameplay? It's just a trailer. I think it's just uh, a trailer. So, I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm a little confused here because the IGN article you linked has the subhead as it's unclear if they're all first party games, and then it talks about how. It doesn't necessarily mean all 25 are first-party games because some of the games like Returnal were published under the PlayStation Studios banner. However, the Wired article where the interview took place says, quote, the group has more than 25 titles in development for the PS5. That is PlayStation Studios. So it's, if they're being developed by PlayStation Studios, doesn't that mean they're all first-party? Well, it could be a, a, a studio. That's, that's why I'm confused. It's just a small, small point, but they could potentially all be first party if they are being 25 titles in development. I think it means they're yeah. being published PlayStation under Studios. PlayStation Studios banner. Yeah. Well, so the, yeah. the, the Wired article says in development, but again, it's not a quote. So it could be. But they might put in development games, if, even if you're publishing it, you could be publishing a game that is in development. Yeah. Publisher of a so, game in development. So it's kind of up in the air. Just a small point, but. They could all be first party. They could all not be first party. Yeah. I, I would suspect they're, they're at least PlayStation exclusives, not, exclusive, uh, not first party. 
Um, but the other thing is that there's no time frame on this. Yeah, and absolutely. The no PS5 time just started, frame. so it's got yeah. seven or eight years left, and it's you know, it's not really mm-hmm. a news story, but this is one of those news stories that gets out, and it's to make all of the people who own a PS5 more excited about owning a PS5. Yeah, uh, it's just funny because they say 25 titles, half of which are entirely new IP, and all of them are still going to feel exactly like God of War, Last of Us, The Order 1866. It's, they just yeah. all feel the same. Bloodborne 2. All 25 of them, identical games. It's the thing where I, I think I think this statement was kind of a, uh, supposed to be like a little bit of a PR thing because uh, yeah. was, it, was it last month where they just got destroyed uh, online for like, they basically yeah. dissolved Sony Bend, not dissolved, but they made them work on The Last of Us Part One remake, which everybody's like, "Why the fuck are you making that game?" And then yeah. basically like we're triple down on on these titles like this and sequels for them, and everybody's like, "We don't fucking want that." And and they dissolved uh, the studio, the the Japanese. Uh, I think it was just Sony Japan. I think so. Yeah. That made like a lot of their like early weird hit games that that first drew people to playstation as as a brand uh i think this is kind of them being like hey no it's cool like we we're not just making a bajillion last of us clones we're not just making god of war Mm -hmm. 17 like we're gonna do other games we swear um which cool i'm happy because that was a concern of mine it's it's kind of thing i'm like why are you telling us now why didn't you like say this back then but Maybe this is their their way of being like, well, if we don't say it right then, it doesn't sound as reactionary. It sounds more like, no, this is what we mean. So I don't know. Yeah. I think Norman Holst is a smart guy. Um, but I think and... it's also um, it's kind of reinforcing their their take on next gen versus Microsoft's. You know, Microsoft is all about cheap games, 100%. free games, et cetera. And Sony is very clear. No, the, we're all about exclusive first party titles. And this is them mm-hmm. sticking to that line and saying, we're still committed to the strategy. We've got a lot coming. We are bringing you PS5 exclusives, mm-hmm. um, which is interesting because they have been backpedaling a little bit. You know, they backpedaled on shutting down the old stores because they don't care about backwards compatibility, etc. Mm-hmm. They they backpedaled on on not having any sort of library by now offering the um, what is it the PlayStation Plus? What is, what is it called? PlayStation collection. Plus? The collection where if you're a mm-hmm. PS5, you get all these PS4. I don't understand why you wouldn't get that on the PS4. <laughs> Because they're assholes. So that's stupid. why. Uh, I will that, that's say because they have more PlayStation Five. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that article mind, so sorry. does clarify. Uh, it is a collection of companies under the PlayStation Studios umbrella that bears out the breadth and depth of the pipeline that is the twenty-five games. Mm. So, so they're all developed by PlayStation Studio games. It's it's under the PlayStation Studios uh, publisher is underneath that because it says housemark isn't even a first party developer and it says it's it's the there he's talking about the playstation studios umbrella of development gotcha that's very confusing it's just the title they give if they publish it they're gonna be on their top only there's a developer there's difference between a developer and a publisher so if you say developed you better mean developed you know that's confusing It's, it's yeah playstation studios is the publisher for some reason they don't like the distinction. Yeah. Um, Ian, what you got for me? Yeah, let's talk about how Target's going to stop selling Pokemon cards. Um, because, this, look, I try not to be uh, apocryphal. I try not to be pessimistic. But people hoarding toilet paper, people hoarding gasoline, people hoarding semiconductors, people hoarding Ford F-150s, and now they're hoarding Pokemon cards. Y'all got to calm down. Okay, there's more than enough random crap that means nothing in the world to go around, vaccines included. So just calm down, <laughs> wait your turn, and get it. You don't need to be storming stores. You don't need to be putting gasoline in plastic bags. You don't need to be accosting Target retailers for your little tiny plastic piece of cardboard that Jake Paul may have touched once on a stream somewhere. Calm down, all right? Your idiocy has led to Target, a major retailer in the United States, Stop selling Pokemon cards in their stores because there are people lining up every single day to try and rush the store to get Pokemon cards. Y'all are idiots. Calm down. Everybody take everybody take a breather and just relax. And maybe I'll finally get an RTX 3080. That's all I want. You're not gonna get one <laughs> ever. Did you I, see that guy's Hummer caught on fire? 
I did, yeah. It's literally <laughs> at the point now where I am not going to get a 3080 because the 3080 Ti announcement is right around the corner. Oh. Like, they, they iced me out of something I am 100% prepared to buy because they just made supply so limited that it's just no longer applicable to me. Maybe you should be better oh. at buying things. Damn, got I, him. I, I could, but it involves me camping out in line for, for like 14 hours at a local You just store. see, you don't want it hard enough. I don't mm. want it hard enough because that's stupid. Big gamer. Yeah. <laughs> Can't even finish out her wilds. I thought uh, I, I thought you said <laughs> too hard for him. I thought you said big gamer, and then I picture my, picture myself as Lady Dimitrescu. <laughs> hey, bro, you wanna you wanna play? You wanna play Gang Beasts? Bro, let's play Gang Beast. Bro, bro, let's play Gang Beast. <laughs> what is this character? <laughs> character chasing you through the house with two controllers. Oh, right, in my that's hands. how she talks. Bro, I'll beat you. Yo, Ethan no, Winters, what are you doing in my house? It's because it's me. Game beast. The, the joke is that I'm a big beast? gamer. The hit game? <laughs> it's, it's really good. Physics. Yo, you're real oh, sus right huge. now. You got giant hands full of Cheeto dust. <laughs> what is oh. happening? This character like, well, oh. Alex doesn't get the joke. He does not get the joke at all. Oh, I hate Cheetos. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Cheetos, Zach, you, what do you want to talk about, baby what boy? What a transition. Um... I don't really want to talk about it, but I will talk about Skull and Bones. Um, yeah. So, boy, pirates are pirate, real. Pirate video games often aren't very good, but can be great. Mm -hmm. uh, pirates, in general, pretty cool concept. Love them. Great. Webster's Dictionary defines pirates. Pirates as pretty cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> da -da -da. <laughs> but no, uh, Skull and Bones. I don't know how long ago they first oh, uh, announced this brand new pirate IP that they were working on. And we've seen look it up. very few footage here and far between. Uh, but the, the interesting wrinkle, I guess, in this is that Ubisoft had been experimenting with with like producing uh, television shows as well. And they wanted to do a tie in television show for a game that was not out yet. Uh, it's it's. Here's the thing. I, I'm interested in when cross media marketing or like cross media franchises can work. Um, bold move to develop them side by side. I think it has a potential to be rad as shit. It also is developed by Ubisoft, which I don't know if I trust them to, to land the plane on that one. Yeah. Um, also like pirates, are kind of out of vogue. They've been out of vogue for a long time. Unfortunately, uh, there was a pirate show a few years ago that got, got like a couple of seasons. I want to say it was on HBO or something. It was just, it was black, supposed to be black sales. Yes. It was supposed to be like, uh, what is it? Game of Thrones, but pirates was like how they build it. So bad. Uh, well, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I would like to see a game that ties in with a television show uh, a, as far as like, some kind of character stuff. Obviously, like your character in the game wouldn't be a major player in the story, or at least I wouldn't want that to be, but have them be interacting with characters in the world that you would then see in the show. Be like, oh shit, that's Captain White yeah. Falcon. Or it's uh, like if there was like a battle in the show, you'd be like, oh, I was prepping for that battle all week. I just I got to play in that battle or something like that. Like, I was, uh, Ian was confused. There was a twist of Jack, uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. Uh, I, oh, I thought it was a dog whistle for white supremacy. <laughs> nope, sure wasn't. What? Was like, uh, Captain uh, White Falcon or something like that? It was yeah. Like, what? Oh, I, Jack in my head, Sparrow. I thought his name was Black Sparrow, and I just Black when I said it back to you, <laughs> <laughs> Captain <laughs> Black Sparrow. Black Jack Sparrow. <laughs> this is the name. Black Jack Sparrow is pretty good. All right, let Dude. me cut in here. Let me cut in here. Give you oh, a quick no. history of Skull and Bones. Uh, it was an it was revealed at Ubisoft's E3 2017 press 2017? conference. 2017? It was originally Jeepers. set to release in quarter 3-4 of 2018. It was then delayed into 2019 and then into March 2020. And mm. then into 2019 investors call, it had been pushed back to April 2021 to March 22 fiscal year. And then this month, they announced a subsequent delay to April 22 to March 2023. Um... Just a little bit of history. It's being developed by Ubisoft Singapore, 
which has helped out with every Assassin's Creed game since Assassin's Creed 2, and notably, they were in charge of the naval combat in Assassin's Creed 3. Um, they also made Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Phantoms, which is a free-to-play, microtransaction-supported <gasps> tactical shooter. Yeah. And that's pretty much... Well, they also did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time reshelled for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox I don't know about this, guys. This is a studio that feels like this is their one shot to make it good, and they're being given a lot of time. So, And it's Ubisoft, so I'm like... I'm like half and half, but I'm leaning more towards Ubisoft history, which is just mediocre. I'm surprised it's, road game. it hasn't been canceled. Like there has to be yeah, something yeah. that's really good or they've sunk too much money into it and they I just want I, it to work. If if I had to guess, because we, we have seen some things and heard like rumblings of like what, how they're retooling the game from what its original vision was. And it seems like this kind of goes along with the uh, story this week of, of them mentioning that they want to go towards less. They, they want to stop releasing three to four big AAA titles a year and start adding in peppering in more uh, free to play games. I yep. think this will be in their dream world. Now it'll be, Hey, we've got this show. Here's a free to play game that's attached to that IP. The pirate battles, the sea battles are actually good in the game. Will this? Will there be any story in the game? Probably not. I think that's probably what they're going to cut down on. Uh, yeah. As far as like, oh, we're, we have to get actual actors in here to fucking voice all these pirates and do their shit. But if, if they can make Sea Battle fun, fuck yeah. For a free-to-play game? Are you kidding me? I'll sign yeah. up for that. I don't care if the show's good. I think I think they also probably got lucky in that, um, if you remember a year or two ago, Ubisoft started delaying Far Cry 6. They basically said, you know what? We're going to take some time and we're going to make sure our games are actually good and we're going to be fine with delaying them to make them better. And so mm -hmm. I could definitely be Skull and Bones, see it as it's a game that's not in a great place. And normally they would try and rush it out the door. But because mm -hmm. they have a change in mind and they're OK with delaying stuff, they've decided to do that with Skull and Bones. So I, I don't I, it, it sounds like it definitely needs more time in the oven, but who knows what's going to come out? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I can't believe 2017. That makes me feel old. Um, wow. Yeah, that was Breath of the Wild, right? 2017? Uh, no, Eight? Breath of the Wild would have been 2016. Because it came out in 2017, didn't it? I don't know. No, I just mean, I just mean the, the, the year it got released. Oh, yes, it would be the year it got released. Sorry, I thought you meant the E3 that they revealed Breath of the Wild. Oh, no. That in was, which that was case, weird. you would be wrong. Um... Hmm. Anything anyone else want to talk about, or we can uh, get out of here and raid a game or two? Oh, I, I'm so excited to raid video games. <laughs> um, just continuing on our uh, VR kick, uh, according oh, to yes. rumors from Upload VR, Sony's next gen VR headset is 4K, 2000 by 2040 per eye, which is a pretty big resolution boost over the PSVR. It has yeah. inside out tracking, it has vibration motor haptic feedback on the headset, which is kind of unique and foveated rendering. And what that means is that they're gonna be able to tell where your eye is looking and therefore focus those pixels as opposed to only the center of the lenses are, are focused. So just some exciting stuff. You know, honestly, I thought with this uh, PS5 VR, I thought they would just kind of just bump up the PS VR a little bit in terms mm -hmm. of specs, but this sounds like they're actually going after some future tech. So this, this could be exciting. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it as someone who, has a PlayStation five, not that it's coming out anytime super soon, but it's like, I, I know it'll be at least consumerly sort of affordable and I have the thing that will run it. So I, instead yeah. of being like, Oh, do I have a computer that could run an Oculus or a whatever? Um, that's mm -hmm. kind of a safer buy as long as it's not the tracking nightmare that the PSVR one was. Um, hundred percent. Great folks. That was the news. If you like news, you can read a newspaper. But right now, we're going to move on to my favorite part of the show, which is the Subpixel rating system, folks, is where we rate video games correctly. This is the mm. ultimate ranking of video games done by us. There are no arguments here, folks. Only the truth. Uh, and the truth we seek today is, what do we want to do? Three games? Are we feeling, are we feeling feisty? I mean, that's probably another, what, 15, 20 minutes? 15, 20 okay minutes? That. Is that too How late you for Zach? you? Yeah, I'm good. You're I'm good? good? You stay up that mm -hmm. late? Yeah. Okay. Want me to eat milky? I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta play some more uh, 
uh, Resident oh, Evil better. either. Oh, I can't wait oh, to talk about yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Very excited about that. Then we can rate it all. That. Okay, uh, I'm going to add names here. Who's got a game? Anyone? Anyone? Oh, you guys go first. I got to think about what I want to bring to this. I will. You go first. Oh, come on. Okay. Um, I want to rate a game that is called Donkey Kong 64. All right, so just so I'm clear, that's the one that's like 3D open world ish. That is right? the yes, that is the uh, N64 Donkey Kong game. Uh it is not Will, what? You might have picked the first game that could go below Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> oh no, I, I don't I, know. About that's that. a hard disagree. Um yeah, but Donkey I'm Kong 64 is a game that there is is okay. It it is the culmination of the collectathon platformer games that went wrong. Nobody yeah. told Nintendo to stop. Um, <laughs> as someone who has <laughs> played a lot of Donkey Kong Country Two because I owned it as a child, um, even the, Donkey Kong Country Two has like golden bananas, the Kong letters. It has pirate coins. It has all sorts of stuff, and that kind that is like the tippy top edge of collecting things for me um this game has way too many collectibles there it's just everything is collectibles everything to do everything is collectibles the only redeeming quality of this game is that it has good music and it has the dk rap and it has lanky kong with his arms that are so funny um but and it, it has the did this come out after or before Smash Brothers? I assume before. Uh, I think it's after because it's it 1999. After? So Smash Brothers would have been the first time you saw full 3D Donkey Kong? DK? I guess that's uh, right. Smash Brothers was January 21st. This was, it literally just says 1999. That's nothing. Is that even what do you mean? Probably yeah. after. Yeah, it must have been oh, after. after, after, after okay. After. So that's at least interesting. But it was cool to kind of see Donkey Kong in 3D, whatever. Um, I, I'm glad they haven't tried to make another one of these. It's it's it it tried. I think Banjo Kazooie and Tui are much better games, despite not playing them as much. Um this did come in a cool yellow cartridge though, so I will give it that. And the Jungle Green N64. Uh but I would place it on this list. I think it is a better game than days no it's a better game than brink i would say it beats brink zach it sounded like you had some thoughts on this game uh yeah i mean will summed it up pretty well it, it has some really cool moments to it again it's it's a game made by rare a studio i i love for a lot of their n64 titles especially the banjo kazooie series uh i i think like will will mentioned they they they're like hey what if we added way too many collectibles to this game Mm -hmm. enjoyable and also you have to switch in between the characters about 30 billion times and also there's a water level where moving is fucking impossible um (laughs) it's a goddamn nightmare um but it it has charm like i finished it as a kid uh which is saying something um Here's the thing, y'all. I haven't actually played Brink. I don't even know. You could show me a picture of Brink, and I don't think I'd know what it was. And that, <laughs> this is a running joke for y'all. For you, I don't have played Kingdom Hearts 3. I have played Cyberpunk 2077. I think it's a worse game than that. But I understand I'm going to get outvoted. I guess I'd put it above Cyberpunk 2077. Wow, so you, that you far would... down. Okay. I would rather yeah. drink bleach than play this game again. <laughs> That's not true. Oh, so let me ask no. you, how much of that how much of that is 2021 playing in 2021 versus playing it on release? I'll say this. When I was a kid, uh I was very much into the video game hype cycle for children. Like I was buying the Nintendo Powers. I was actually I remember getting a VHS tape that had premiere footage of this game. Uh, what was what was their their Jet Force Gemini? And another game, I can't remember what it was. And I remember like fucking watching that VHS tape like three fucking times. And it was it was just like three. twenty minutes of like <laughs> here's, here's what are, I'm sorry. Like, I, I just expected you to say like thirty or something hyperbolic. <laughs> but I was I was so fucking hyped for like, all of these games. I'm like, fuck yeah, I love Rare. Banjo kazooie, so good. Uh 
Golden Perfect eye. dark. So good. Golden eye. So good. And and this this of times. all the games that they put out, I think was played it three times. I think this this was easily their biggest misstep. Uh, yeah. And yeah, and I, I don't think you're disagreeing with that. I just think it's not. Uh, it's not. It it's really unfun to play. Like once you get three Kongs to control, it's such a nightmare. Also, there's a moment in the game where you have to go back and replay two really old arcade games, and you have to do really good in some really fucked. Mm arcade games and it's like you have to do this to to go further in the game and all of a sudden as a kid i remember being like yo i don't want to play arkanoid at all or whatever the fuck the game <laughs> it, was, it was some real old uh, game they somehow got the rights to man the reason so my, i know finally it's... sorry go ahead uh, i was just gonna say the reason i know it's bad and not in a funny way is that Giant Bomb had did that whole Super Mario Sunshine feature that they made it all the way through, and then they did Burgle My Bananas with this, and they had to stop because Donkey Kong 64 is not a good game, even in jest. What is Burgle My Bananas? They try so they were for uh, Steal My Sunshine. It was a game show revolving around playing, uh, getting the most shines in. Yeah. Okay, Super Mario okay. Sunshine. So then Burgle My Bananas was an even more game show where they played Donkey Kong 64 and they had like external power ups where like you could go twice if you had this and everything. And it got to the point where okay. they like would spin the wheel to then play Super Mario 64 because it was a better game than Donkey yeah. Kong 64. Yeah. And I think they yeah. just ended up stopping because they just hated playing it so much. Um, so I, I've never played this game, but I watched a lot of Burgle My Bananas, so I'm, I'm familiar with the game. And that's basically all I have to add. I, I would say for placement, though, I'm looking at it from the bottom up. I don't think it's as bad as Cyberpunk, because Cyberpunk is literally so bad that you cannot buy it for PlayStation. You still cannot buy it. It's just a horribly broken game. Well, if, you, three, if you could be a real gamer and get a PC, you could at least play it. Oof. But th see, that's the thing is having played it on a Series X, which still runs it well, it's not worth playing. <laughs> so um, Kingdom Hearts 3 is a bad game. It's a bad game. I think I would rather <laughs> play. Really game. I think I would, as someone who's played Donkey Kong 64 and not played Kingdom Hearts 3. Let me, let me place it. Let me place it. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm, sorry. Taking, I'm taking forever. So let me speed up. I think it goes below DayZ. Simply because Daisy had a very interesting new mechanic going, even though they ended up just following falling apart and never really improving past that that early access. Mm. Um, it's better than Brink though, because Brink is just a shell of a bad multiplayer game. It's five multiplayer maps. It doesn't feel good, and that's it. Donkey Kong sixty four at least has more than that. Mm. I mean, it's the perfect shell of a bad multiplayer game, but. Yeah, so I'm saying above Brink, below Daisy. I, I would, I would agree with that. I I put it there. All right, that's fine. We can put it there as long as it. Yeah, it can't be higher than like <laughs> a, a lot of. <laughs> God damn it! I don't. Know, people, that's the one thing people have brought up all the time yeah, is that Mirror's I, I, Edge is way too high. Mirror's Edge is a very no, good video game. It's very. It very plays good. so like. It plays so yeah. well. And, I, and to that point, Mirror's Edge Catalyst is also a good it. video game. But Mirror's Edge 1 is so good. It still plays well. It still holds it, up. Yeah, right it holds up 100%. And Mass Effect 2, that's way Now, is it better than Control? Yeah. No, but it still deserves to be up there. <sighs> uh, okay, Will, what's your game? Uh, shut up. That was my game, you butt. Oh, that was your game. <laughs> Zach, what's your, what's your game? Uh... Ian, what's your game? <laughs> uh, okay, look, here's the thing. I do have a game, but I kind of forgot it in the last minute or two. <laughs> so that's exactly what happened to me. Uh, oh, boy. All right, let me, let me just, I'm just going to Google video games. <laughs> I've got one. I got one. Okay. Okay, let's put it on the list. Google. It's time to talk about. I'm gunning for the top, folks. We need to talk about Factorio. Oh, no. Oh. Factorio is incredible. Oh, let me tell you about Factorio. God, Factorio. Number one. Incredible tech tree, really, really good graphics. It like it has an art style and it sticks to it. Just the amount of like um, control mechanisms it has is really good. Like you can you have a crafting queue. It has the single greatest crafting system in any video game ever, and I will tell you why. Because if you need to craft something. 
that requires five other objects that are crafted by five other objects. So for example, you need to craft uh, a gasoline engine that requires steel, that requires rubber, and the rubber's made from trees or whatever. You can just click craft engine and it will automatically queue all the subordinates for you. You don't have to step through a crafting tree like every other game does. And let me tell you something, I have brought this up 50 times. Every single time I touch a crafting system now, and it doesn't have that implementation where I want to craft something and it makes me craft four items before I can craft that final thing, even though I have all the supplies that I need, it's crap. It frustrates me so badly. Factorio has literally changed how I interact and judge crafting systems, and that's everywhere. And that's just one small part of what it is. An incredible game. I have like hundreds of hours in this game because every time I touch it, it sucks you in. And there's so many different ways to play. There's so many different challenges. Just an incredibly expansive tech tree. And it also does a fantastic job of expanding the game as you're going. You know, like at first, it's all about inserters and running around. And then you get your conveyor belts up and it's all about routing the conveyor belts. And then all of a sudden you have drone technology and it's like, forget conveyor belts. That's for schmucks. We're going to do drones everywhere. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I don't need coal anymore because I've got nuclear power. So now I got to get my nuclear power up. And then all of a sudden the aliens are attacking you more. And you're like, well, I got to get a train going with artillery cannons on it going around the map. And every time it stops, I got to have a little train station to feed it artillery shells again. Factorio is incredible. And quite frankly, I'm looking at this list, folks. Say it. Say it. I say it. I think it's number one. Yes! I think it's number one. I think it's number one. Oh, let me just, let me just explain it real quick. It's, oh, I've, I've, I'm, not, I'm not done with Outer Wilds yet. So I'm just blanking that in my mind. It's a good game. I think it's better than Yakuza 0. It's definitely better than Doom, Mirror's Edge, Control, Mass Effect 2, Prey. It's it's really just, is it better than Yakuza 0, at least in my mind? Again, not having completed Outer Wilds. And I think it is better than Yakuza 0 because of just how oh. much time. I, I literally have to control myself not to play Factorio because I know if I touch that game, 40 hours gone. The entire next week is just playing Factorio. Oh. So I, I prevent myself from playing that game too. It, it is... Yeah, for it's the ultimate game for people who like who like those. And and David's in the chat calling us insane. Doesn't David do like programming and stuff? I that's the biggest surprising thing to me. Yeah, but he, so he doesn't want to do it. He does this is his job. He doesn't no, want to no, do it. No, no, I know. I just I, I usually equate those things like a lot of people who like I'm not saying this is like my stereotyping, mentality. but um it just it seems like a game. I, I don't know. I Ian and I are both huge suckers for those types of games. Mm. Um God, and you're you you are 100 percent right about that crafting system. That is, I think Satisfactory yeah. does it. No, they do not. They don't. Okay. I don't. I don't think yeah. they do. But the fact that like you, the, it crafts the and it takes the same amount of time. But the fact that it crap uh, crafts the things in sequence for you and you don't have to worry about it yes. is is just it's such an innovation. And, it's like the Nemesis system. Yeah. Why aren't more people using it? Yeah, and also the fact that 90% of the stuff, 90% no. <laughs> of the stuff, sad. except for like the super top tier stuff, you can craft on yourself. So like Satisfactory does a terrible job of being like, you can craft these things, but some things you have to craft at this station, some things you have to craft at this station. And so you're constantly running around going, I need to craft this. Do I have to go to this station or this station? Whereas Factorio, it's like, unless you're building super something super complicated like nuclear fuel that has to be made in a factory, you're just like, oh, I need this. I need a, a conveyor belt, an inserter, et cetera boom craft it right out of my backpack and it's just like the and i just want to say something it's not that this is that automation type of game that makes it good it's that it is the perfect pinnacle evolution revolution of the automation game that makes it so much better than even non-automation games they 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 plop themselves in a genre and they perfected and iterated and revolutionized it and it's it's real good, y'all. I understand if you don't like that genre, but it's not just about it being an automation game. It's about it coming in and just nailing mechanics, nailing it in spades. Love it. Zach, have you ever played this game? No. And, and looking at it, I don't know if it's a game I'd care to play, so I feel bad wanting to tell you that it would be a poor choice to put this at number one. But, uh, you know, it is, it is your podcast, and it's two of you being like, it should be number one. And I'm just like, <laughs> hey, let's go. Breath of the Wild. What, do you, what do you, game. Will? You think it's uh, also at the top? You know, I'm surprised. I'm gonna say this. 
Yeah. I think it's better than the Outer Wilds, but I don't think it's better than Yakuza 0. Look, well, I you know we're saying that you <laughs> think the order of the top. I mean, is wrong. I, those are wrong. I mean, obviously, Doom should be at the top, but. Um, okay. I'm, I know we're 82 minutes into this podcast, and this may not be the time to do it, but I've said it before. We need to introduce a moving mechanic at some point. Yes. I don't think it's the I, day. I, uh, I told this to Chris on the stream earlier today, but I was thinking either episode 50 or when we reach 50 games that we have a big round table of you and I and a couple guests and we just hash out the top 50. I think that's fun. See, that's, that's good for 50. I was thinking we could do this at the same time is also if you come on the show. So for example, I didn't have a game today. I could come in and say, I think Outer Worlds is in the wrong place. Mm-hmm. But argue it. Yeah, but so, I don't get to pick where it goes. It just comes up for discussion again. So I think I think that's a good idea. Introducing an amendment that is you either get to add a game that week or dis- rediscuss another game. Yes. And I think the one caveat is if a game gets brought up for a rediscussion, it can go anywhere except for where it currently is. So it has to move. Okay. I, like I, will, I will add that amendment uh, after this. On the amendments page, folks, if you want to actually see this Google document, right yeah. down in the description is the link to the uh, Google document if you want to read it. So it is there. Um, um, back wait, to wait the discussion. You, wait, will, will. What? Is this, is this locked? It's, it's locked. It's, it's view only. Okay. All right. Bye. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lose oh, all the science. Anyways, yeah. So I, I think it goes above Adder Wilds, and here's why. I haven't finished Outer Wilds, but we literally had a discussion earlier this podcast talking about how some of the things in Outer Wilds are a little irksome. They're not quite well done, and you bang your head against it, and they're things that prevent you from finishing the game unless you work around that. And in Factorio, I can't think of anything that sticks out that badly across the entirety of Factorio. I mean, it kind of sounds like a you problem. Nobody else I've ever met has had this problem. (laughs) I I would say... uh, Outer Wilds is one of the perfect video game experiences where you sit down, you play the entire game, you had a great connection with the game, it's great gameplay, it's, it's solid, it's 100%, it might be the, the 10 out of 10, the perfect game, one of the perfect games. But I think Factorio, if I had to choose a game, to, only one game to play the rest of my life, I would not choose the Outer Wilds, I would choose Factorio. Like I mean, that's, that's, that's the like, difference. Like if, if we had if we had Journey on this list, Journey would be super fucking high, but it would be the same thing. Where I'd be like, "Well, I don't. I'm not. I wouldn't choose yeah. to, to be the, the game I could play for the rest of my life." But I would be like, "This is one of the perfect games." Yeah. So I think we have to analyze it from the lens of both of those categories put together. And, and so it's like, what is the ultimate experience of a game, including the length of time you can play it and the experience of playing that game? And I and think how well they hit the intended experience. Yes. Et cetera. So, yeah. So even though I would pick Factorio for the game I would play for the rest of my life, I think Yakuza Zero as an experience outweighs the joy. Wait a minute. Why are we talking about Yakuza Zero? I thought we were arguing. Outer Wilds versus Factorio no, but, for see, I, one. I think Factorio is worse than Yakuza 0. But you're going to put it all the way down at number 3, below Outer Wilds and Yakuza 0. Yeah, because I want to move Outer Wilds eventually. But I can't do that right now. <laughs> so this, this guy's doing a long con Outer Wilds, to get Yakuza 0. I will zero. then say it's better than Yakuza 0, which I just don't agree with. Uh, here's the question. You think it's better than Doom, which you clearly hold a high yes. opinion of. I don't, but I'm picking and choosing my battles. I can't, I can't okay, put but, Factorio okay. at number four. I don't mean to slap you on the wrist, but slap, slap. Don't think too far ahead. Just think about this list as it currently is. Okay. You can only put Factorio on it. I will put Where it at number it three. I would put it above Yakuza 0, and here's why. Yakuza 0 is a fantastic like 30 to 60 <laughs> hour experience, but there is a finite amount of content in that game, and Factorio is like almost infinite content. They're both fantastic games, but I feel like Factorio is just giving and giving and giving and giving. Whereas Yakuza Zero does have a does have a bottom. It's a very deep bottom. <laughs> Factorio <laughs> is Why did you phrase all of it like that? Oh. Uh, so, okay, I, so wait a minute. So, so I'm saying above Yakuza Zero. Will you're saying below Yakuza Zero? Yeah. Maybe the tiebreaker. 
Yeah, I think you're the tiebreaker. Below Yarks. Below Yarks. Yarks. <laughs> okay, I'm still okay with that. <sighs> <sighs> it's just incredible, guys. I know. You I just, I, I'm Factorial. trying. I'm, I think I'm more inclined to agree with you, Ian, but I have to view it in my brain this way for this list. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely like which list of a criteria you're judging yeah. against games. I, I just want to finish that by saying that was not an exaggeration. That is not an act. Literally every single time I think of Factorio, the next thing I think is, should I be thinking about this? Because it will suck me in again. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I think after this, as the ex, as I'm editing the podcast to go up, I might just play Factorio. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the go. opposite of like, would you rather play Brink or Cyberpunk? It's like, uh, how how quickly are you going to play Factorio just because it was brought up? Oh, it's, it's like, oh, immediately. God. It's it's incredible. And, and that you game should... does not suffer from starting over. Starting over is just a, oh. is beautiful. It's... Like you're yes. like it's so much. It's like starting over Minecraft. It's just opportunity. It's like solid, yeah. tangible opportunity. Zach, your oh. homework is play Factorio. You it's should incredible. play Factorio. It's, it's really, really good. Yeah. It's like, even if you're not into automation games, at least get Factorio shot because it is by far the best, most painless entry into the automation yeah. genre. Every other game I, is not quite as good. It's the thing where like I, I actually think I would enjoy it because I do kind of enjoy games like that on paper. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, you should play games you on about. your computer. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Maybe I can take notes like fucking nerd will over hey, here. Hey, you want to see my Factorio notes, bitch? I'm sure you have them. Uh, all right, I got a game. Oh, great. And, and actually, I, I, I got a couple games, but I do want to ask y'all to, to make sure we pick a game that we've all played because I, I do want to have some, some discussion. Uh, oh, Talos Principle. I have not played it. What was it? Damn it. The Talos, Talos Principle? Principle? Oh, I haven't played it either, so. Ah, oh, it's such a good game. Uh, That's all right, the cat, then... right? Yeah, the cat is on the thing. It's not really an important part of the game. Um, Damn, I don't want to play it now. It's a good game. Um, <laughs> all right, then Ghost of Tsushima. I've played it. Oh, Chris and I were discussing this today. Uh, You've played it as well? I, I played yeah, it uh, about 70%. So, okay. so give us the rundown, Zach, and then tell us where you put it. Okay, uh, Ghost of Tsushima is, I think, my favorite open world game. Uh, let me rephrase that. My favorite Ubisoft style open world game, uh, which is to say it's a big open map. There's a lot of things to check off. You're opening the map. You're discovering areas. There are side missions uh, that you can do alongside the main quest. Uh, you know, you're slowly powering up your character. You're getting uh, better gear over time. You're taking on bigger enemies. Um, it, it's just constantly drip feeding you improvements and and making you feel like a badass. So at the end of the game, you're like, hell yeah, I am I am the ghost of Tsushima. Um, the reason I think it is the best of that style of open world game is that it just the world is one. The the, the game is beautiful. Two, I think they did an incredible job at at fixing a lot of problems I have with open worlds. Actually. Uh, not to plug our own shit, but on Save Datacast, our, one of our own podcasts, last week we talked about what makes a quote-unquote good open world game. And I think a lot of us had a lot of nice things to say about Ghost of Tsushima and, and how it handles the open world and the exploration and everything like that. Um, I think it it does a really good job of having a story, a narrative that you actually care about on top of the open world, which I think is often a problem uh, a part uh, like like most open world games it, it is yeah it, it's like it's the enjoyment of feeling yourself getting better and stronger uh and you don't you don't really care about the the overall plot this like the plot is i think really good i think jin sakai as a character is really interesting i think the conflict he has with wanting to save his country but also like shed what he used to think of as like honor and like the way he should behave and in the process like alienating himself from his family sorry that's it's not really spoilers. Um, I just think it's really freaking good. And there's so much to do, but it doesn't like hinder you in a bad way. Uh, the duels in the game are like yeah. just kick ass boss fights. Like the first one, I think most people will reach in the game is like this, this killer who is like trying to get some sacred sword or it might be like sacred armor. And, it's like the lightning god armor or some shit like that. And as you go to like the place where, where it's supposed to be buried, like there is like a storm coming and then you get to the guy and, and like, as you like pull out your swords, 
uh, and like has like the cool like drum beat and everything like lightning starts striking behind you in the background and it's like this kicks so much I get I'm getting chills literally talking about this right now <laughs> of how much of a cool moment that was in the game and on top of that it also has a really fucking good multiplayer mode which I don't know if you want to factor that <gasps> into that. the game uh, Ghost of Tsushima Legends is phenomenal uh, it's it, for the people that actually played it Everyone that talks about it is like, this mode kicks so much ass. I'm super into it. Uh, and and I think a decent amount of people dropped off and didn't get to experience it. But it's literally like, hey, what if we made like a Destiny style raid mission mode with Ghost of Tsushima mechanics where you can play with up to four people and, and work together. And there's even like stealth sections where you can be like, okay, we're all going to like fire our arrows on three to like knock out the three guards at the same time and like calling that out and like doing that. And they have like a ping system that you can do that without like having to actually be on comms with people. So in case you're, you are matched with randos, then like you can do that. But oh my God. And the progression system is really good in that, in that online mode too, where you're getting armor that like actually gives you abilities in the game and like buffs certain parts of your character, like, like a Destiny or a, a Diablo clone type. It's so good. Um, Ghost of Tsushima kicks ass. Where I would think. you put it? Hmm. Uh, while you're thinking, I, I will say uh, that's one of the few games that has made me that has treated a sword as like a deadly weapon. Because a lot of games, yeah. like you just use a sword, you hit a guy a bunch of times and he dies. But like this game is one of the few where it's just like you can do a one and done on a guy. Kind of like mm -hmm. that, that, whatever that samurai fighting game is, uh, that has that. Samurai Showdown? I think so. Whatever it is. Neo? Mm -hmm. Um, is that sort of thing. So I, I, I genuinely love this game. It's also one of the, it is the only game that I have used a photo mode in. Oh, yeah. To take photo pictures. great. Uh, uh yeah. okay. As far as where I place it, I mean, again, it's the thing where, like, you have a lot of games I love, like, in the middle. And then you have a lot of games I either haven't played or don't think are that good towards the top. Uh, <laughs> so like part of me wants to put it pretty high. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm going to put it above Factorio because you just put Factorio there and it's a game I haven't played. Um, <laughs> but I also haven't played Yakuza 0 and I haven't played uh, Mirror's Edge. I just don't think it. I don't think it's that good. I, I think it's better than Control. <sighs> I don't know if I think it's better than Mass Effect 2, though, is the problem. <laughs> Everything is. Um, <laughs> you know, while you're thinking on it, let me let me, let me oh. just say something. I, I was very looking forward to Ghost of Tsushima because I kind of hadn't played an open world game in a while. Mm -hmm. And then earlier last year, I played, I want to say like March, April, I got Assassin's Creed Origins, which I'm not even an Assassin's Creed fan. Um, but I bought it and I played like 25 hours of it. Like it was just comfy and cozy to just get into an open world game that I didn't even think was amazing, but it was just a good way to spend some time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm ready for a triple a open world game. I'm ready to dive in ready for ghost of Tsushima. And then it came out and I played about eight hours of it. And then I put it away. Wow. But it's very hard for me to pinpoint Why? what it is about that game that didn't grab me because huh. it was just overall, it didn't grab me. I think part of it was, it felt like, they kept trying to do the Breath of the Wild signposting where you could see things in the distance and then head towards them. But it also felt like the terrain was not well made because it felt like you would be on a mountaintop and you would see something. But as soon as you got down, the terrain just kind of melted together. So they would do some signposting, but it was only particular. It also felt like the combat, once you got the combat, I remember about 90 minutes into the game, I went to a camp and I was still very low leveled and I just killed like 40 guys in a row in combat. I didn't even stealth. I was just taking them out, continuous combat. It felt like the combat, once you got it, wasn't too deep. And it got a little bit deeper later on when they started introducing more enemy types, et cetera, mm -hmm. that were a little bit more punishing, but it still felt a little bit, I don't want to call it one note. It felt like two or three note. I feel like and, you, would, you wouldn't have unlocked all the stances yet at that point. Uh, no, but eventually I did. And that made it slightly more interesting, but it still didn't feel like there was enough depth to carry me through the game with that. The story, I think the, there were good characters in the story, but there were also some characters who were just like 
stupid. It kind of telegraphed where it was going. Like, again, I, I barely finished the game, but I can tell already that at the end of the game, he's going to have to fight his uncle, blah, blah, blah. It's like telegraphing it all the way. So I don't think the game is bad, but I was not that impressed with the game. It, I, I was say, really wanting to love it, and it didn't grab me. One moment in the game that, that, that really stuck out to me that I feel like a lot of people didn't, I didn't see people talking about uh, afterwards, was when you get the, like... There's a point in the game where you get a mo like a, you, you get a meter that if the meter fills up, you get an instant kill attack that you can use yeah. for like five seconds. Uh, and when you do that, like it goes in like black and white and you're, it's just like the cool samurai, like one motion and like people just get cut in half and it's dope as shit. The first time that Jin gets that ability, the way it is done and like the moment where it's like he 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 like comes out as the ghost and is just like slaughters like you said yeah. legitimately like they, they let that mode go longer than it normally does in the gameplay for this like story moment and he kills so many people and he like like turns around and like all the people are like looking at him the people of japan of Tsushima, and he like screams and is just like we will not let them beat us like blah blah, blah. and he like gives this speech and i'm getting chills again talking about this game <laughs> so powerful and I, I actually started crying in that moment and literally i talked about it afterwards and like nobody was like no i never not yeah that moment was like cool but like whatever but i was like that moment was so powerful to me i thought it ripped ass and, you, you make and... me want to go back and finish the game because i i'm 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 there but i the, the one thing i did want to say is i think the unlike ian i i felt in that game i always knew where i was because I thought the biomes were very distinct. Like, I, I always knew where that big bamboo forest area was and then where the whole lake area was. And also the map was really helpful with a lot of things. There was always enough yeah, stuff on it and interesting. Amazing. Also, the wind mechanic with guiding you which way to go yes, is okay. absolutely gorgeous and a Incredibly perfect good. solution to a game that you can't have a GPS in or a waypoint system yep. in. Um, yep. It just... And it, it made the game... Like, I wanted to see which direction I was going because the way it affected things was so cool. Um, there's also one mission that is really, really good. Uh, there was, like, a bamboo forest where there people think there's an evil spirit in there. Yeah, and it just turns exactly out it's some true. bandits, but it's just yeah, so... Yeah. There's, like, you, like, crouch down at this little fire and you, like, talk to the guy all about it. Also, my samurai looks so cool all the time. I had this huge yeah. I had this huge hat that came below my head, but it was, like, gnarled up at the top. And then I just had, like, this blue robes. And so I was – every single screenshot and, uh, like, conversation I had with people was just Jin's eye through the straw hat. But I just looked so cool. And I was, like, pretending – like, being, like, a, a – like a hermit samurai who was just going around killing people. Oh, I want to go play it, especially on a PS5. Um, I will say, I did play it on the PlayStation 5. It looks great. I might agree yeah, I, with you so, for your positioning. One slight knock, PS4, it was chugging on a base PS4. And a PS4 Pro, people said it basically just almost locked 30 FPS. So it, See, it, 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 it ran great on my PS4. It was a little weird. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't you don't remember that opening that opening beach scene where it starts chugging below twenty? No, see, I didn't have any of that. A hundred percent it, and I, I tell you why you're wrong because Digital Foundry they did a video and it was like, look at this tanking. It's I don't, I, it's a little. Chunky. I just thought it looked. Yeah. I, I don't see the low but times I, see, were I don't remember any of that, and that's not. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but it did not affect my gameplay experience at all. That's fair. Yeah, I think I think one thing that was cool about the, that game was because it was. I think that game got pushed back six months from when it was supposed to release because of last of us part two slipping so many times mm -hmm. the, the team got so much extra time to work on it and polish yeah. it and do a lot of, and make the multiplayer mode, which I don't think was supposed to be there. I really yeah. want to try that. It's really good. It's really fucking good. Oh, and also the multiplayer mode has a completely different art style to it. Instead of being grounded in reality, it's like you're fighting spirits and there are like, the, there's like one section where like a bunch of like just giant dripping heart blood, like giant giant hearts dripping with blood are like just floating in the air around you, and it's like what the fuck is happening? It's spooky. Yeah, it's really good. It's such a good mode. So in terms of putting it on the list, I, I know I'm in the minority here, but I'm going to concede that, that that it connected with you guys a lot more than it did with me, and I think based on that, it goes below Control and above Mass Effect too. I think it's I 
from what you guys are saying, if it connects with you, it, it's a great game. But the world building and story and control, man, that that kicks it above it for me. Here's the thing. I actually, now that I, I raved about it so much, I actually want to put it above control. I actually, I, here's the thing. I would put it above Mirror's <laughs> Edge. I'll say that. You put it above Factorio, you traitor. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, yeah, I would, but I know, <laughs> I'm going to argue for above Mirror's Edge. Oh, what, I, what do you think? I could never put it above Factorio. I can never put it above Yakuza 0. I wouldn't put it above Outer Wilds. I would. I You got me thinking a lot. I love control. That is a known fact in the Bible of the universe. I think, I think the world building and control is second Top to none. Notch. I, the rest of it is... But I think can I just say something real quick, good. Will? You, you played about... You played like, if I remember correctly, you played about 25% of Tsushima and you stopped playing it, but kept saying, I should really get back to it. I should really get back to it. And I believe it was months later that you finally got back to it, but it sounds like you didn't even finish it then. So not to denigrate the game, but you keep saying it's amazing, but you can't even sit down and finish it. You can't even bring no, yourself I, to finish I, it. I've gotten you, about you, 75% uh, through it and then I stopped. I've never gone back to it. If, if I may, Ian, uh, do you play a game that isn't Factorio or another online multiplayer game more than eight hours? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm just being a joke. I have beat games before. No, Ian has okay. a ridiculously low threshold for video games. <laughs> no, I have a I have a high. I'm sorry. Low yeah. threshold for bad I, games. I mean, you have I a have low a... threshold. Like you play an hour of a game high and then standards. judge it and then never go back to it. <laughs> but I, I, you know, that was a bit in jest. But but honestly, like I know that you loved Control and you like blazed through it because but, you were invested in it. And yes. if Ghost of Tsushima can't pull you in enough to even finish it. But that's I don't different think that because be there's. Control. I like control for different reasons than I like Ghost of Tsushima. I think Ghost of Tsushima has better combat and all around game design than control. I think control I has amazing world building. The story sucked me in immediately. I love exploring that environment and being soaked into it. But I am also a huge sucker for samurais and Japan and stuff. And I think that combat system is better than controls. That, yes, but game mechanics, no, because I think you're forgetting all the wonky game mechanics in Control. Like the the motel, the, the what is it called, the ashtray maze, like all the stuff that they were bending and that worked really well, the atypical stuff. Yeah, but I think I think the bamboo forest, the scary wind, the wind, you and named, all that you named, stuff. You named one good side quest. Here's the thing. There are like all the other side quests in Ghost of Tsushima are middling at best. Here's the thing. Like, uh, the the really good. Oh, it's yes, like... it is. Uh, here's the thing. I, I, I agree hundred percent with Will. I think control beats Tsushima hands down in like world building and, and it's mm -hmm. in this and uniqueness. I think Tsushima in just about everything kicks control to the curve. And if, if I had to go back and play one of them, I would go back and play Tsushima. And and also, especially with the online mode, which I know that's like a cheap thing to be like, well, it's got multiplayer. It's valid. But it's, it's part of it. Really good multiplayer. That's the thing. Yeah, if control had multiplayer, it'd be a different conversation. I don't think Combat and control is pretty bad. It's not good. Yeah. I did not like it. It stopped me from beating the game. <laughs> Same. <laughs> um, yeah, I I would put it, I would put it at six. So okay. it sounds like the, the consensus is below Mirror's Edge, above Control. Uh, here's the thing. It should be above Mirror's Edge, but that's fine. Y'all are really big Mirror's Edge stands. That's fine. It's Have you just, played man. Mirror's yeah. Edge? Have you played it? Have you played it? No, I haven't. Okay. I just, I just can't. I'm going to... It's very your quick. Steam name. It holds up very well. It's so good. It's so good. You just, it's you're just, just like... Corporate shills for EA. Oh, we are. When you play it, and when you play it, like it's an old game, there's so much in it that you realize has influenced so many other games. It is, mm. it is like a groundbreaking game. And it still plays great. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, folks, we did it. We got I through think, it. You know, you know, if you have Game Pass, I believe it's part of it. It is. It is on, it is, I, I do have uh, yeah. Game Pass. Go like play that. that. Yes. 2009? Yes. And Factorio. Stupid. Stupid boy. On Game Pass? Oh, <sighs> No. Um, folks, we did it. We made it through it. That was, I think that was one of the best discussions we've had so far. I think I we was really... just honestly surprised because Will, I was pretty sure you thought Ghost of Tsushima was just like a straight down the middle game. And to hear you just argue for it so much, just 
blew me away. Really? Oh, I Here's the thing. Yeah, I think I think control surprising. is a straight down the middle game except the world building. Yeah. Is, is I class. yeah, I, I yeah. guess I never really I love go, like yeah, my PS4 is l- loaded with screenshots from that game. Oh, man, I, here's the thing. I, it's not my place to talk about it. Prey, Prey should be above control. It has better world building. No, and that is, no, that is not true. That's, that is like, somebody that is, who just recently. I don't know why you're lying. <laughs> For the two hours. It tries real hard, but it's not as gripping. It's not, it's not better world building. Control. It's good world building. It's a good twist thingy. And I'm it's, sorry, but, but it's not. What do they call the magic mirrors in the. Uh... I don't care. In the first like five yeah. minutes of control, you see your boss, the director, kill himself, and then you go to another world, and then all of a sudden his face is haunting in front of you, and you have a magic gun and voices in your head, and it's just like, what is going on? I'm hooked. Yeah. What game are you talking about? Control. Control. Oh, control. Control. Sorry. 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 I thought yeah. you were talking about prey. I, I was will like, say, That's not Ian knows this very well. I'm a sucker for bureaucracy where it doesn't matter, like SCP stuff. Like what? Or, yeah. or like, uh, what's that? This was SCP the game, which was great. What, what's, 100%. what's the cabin in the woods? Like, no one, there would uh, yeah. never yeah. exist a company that monitors really scary, cool. like, things like that. But it's just like something about it is just so neat. Like, I want to see, like, the file forms for, like, that. Oh, the documents, man. The documents. Anyways, folks, we have a new we ranking. Than a game. Um, number one is still the Outer Wilds. Number two, Yakuza Zero. Number three, Factorio. Number four, Doom 1993. Number five, Mirror's Edge. Number six, Ghost of Tsushima. What are you laughing at? I just realized I was going to make fun of you for saying the Outer Wilds, but then I realized I put that in there last time. Oh. <laughs> That's why it's like that. I, you, it's weird, too, because I looked at that and I was like, I don't think that's right, but I wouldn't have changed it. Oh, you're a jerk. Anyways, number seven, control. Number eight, I thought you were laughing at Yakuza because I say it that way every time. Number eight, Mass Effect 2. Number nine, Prey. Number 10, Shadow of Colossus. Number 11, Star Wars Battlefront 2004. Number 12, Horizon Zero sucks. Number 13, Battlefield 1943. Number 14, Middle Earth, colon, Shadow of Mordor. Number 15, The Outer World, <laughs> you jerk. Ugh. Number 16, Halo 4. Number 17, Fallout 4. Number 18, No Man's Sky. Number 19, DayZ. Whew. Number 20, Donkey Kong 64. Number 21, Brink. Number 22, Kingdom Hearts 3. And number 23, the worst game of all time. According to us, we hit did it, it, Subpixel. Cyberpunk 2077. We did it. The most middling, mediocre game right down the center of all time is... Horizon, Horizon Zero, Zero Dawn. Dawn. <laughs> Damn. We're back to square one, That's folks. Right. Um, let me play the music here, and we can get the heck out of here. Zach, thank you for joining us this week. Uh, yeah, pleasure. Is there anything you would like to plug, sir? Uh, no, I don't do anything on the internet. Perfect. Just kidding. Uh, please go check out my YouTube channel. Well, the youtube channel i manage with several other folks that is youtube.com slash save data team i believe david's made it so if you go to save data team.com that actually takes you there uh we also have uh, our twitch channel which is twitch.tv slash save data team our tiktok which is tiktok.com slash save data team it's it's everything we we have the branding on lock so just wherever you want to go save data team uh we do a variety of podcasts let's plays and video essays all about gaming gaming history so go check us out there Nice. Awesome. I, I'm also excited for the endless discussion of us doing a stream together and not yet doing it. Not but yet. That will, um, <laughs> it's going to happen. It's it'll happen, happen one day, folks. It'll be incredible. Um, Ian, thank you for joining me as always. Uh, people can find you at Think Gibson on the Twitter. Folks, you can find all, all right. of our content at subpixelfilms.com. They'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel where you can check out hot, hot archives of our videos. Also, Subpixel Streams is another channel we do with all our stream archives and Subpixel Shorts with all our tiktok shorts at subpixel team on all of the sweet sweet socials if you want to check us out uh this has been episode 19 of local chat the number one podcast now in the universe we had to take over um so definitely check us out anchor fm anchor.fm slash local chat is our new podcast host so go there and download or support us or listen to stuff and we will see you all next week Goodbye. I feel like...
I feel oh, like I got that was good. My back. Uh, now we you just hang assholes. out here for a second. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, I'm stop the recording. Uh, I, this is what it feels like. This has got to be what a guest feels like every single time they come on this podcast and they see the list, and we just bend them over and just <laughs> shove their game in a random place. No, no. I was happy with. I mean, getting six on that. Yeah, of course you were happy with it, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting that as the cold open. Oh, that's very good. Um, everyone in chat, 